So that's one reason. Number two is that we shouldn't touch the front of your mask when you try to remove it. I mean, granted, when you fold it, you may touch it, but when you remove it, you shouldn't touch because the, the chance of you touching your nose or mouth increases. The mask is now part of my wardrobe. I work outdoors a lot, so I wear the mask at least eight hours a day. And recently, I've noticed it's taking a toll on my skin. Dermatologist Dr. Eileen Tan has seen an increase of 15 to 20 percent of patients seeking help for mask-related face problems, including maskne, acne that is brought on by wearing a face mask. The rashes or the uh, acne tend to occur along the line where you are wearing the mask. Like in this uh, student, you can see that the you know inflammatory papules and also you can see that the abrasion marks from the stripe in the mask contact point. And um, like this particular uh, healthcare worker, you can see that the face is obviously swollen and very well defined and there's a lot of breakages and a bit of bleeding into the skin. Can the skin ever be restored to its former condition in this case? Uh, well, I managed to and yeah, she has improved. But of course, there's a little bit of post-inflammatory uh, pigmentation. 2.5 would be very uh, helpful. Patients who had like rashes around the mouth, you know, after eating, you're supposed to put back the mask immediately and that can cause irritation around the mouth. How can wearing a mask create these kinds of skin problems? It depends on the type of mask that you're wearing. And this can cause a buildup of, uh, of course, moisture and uh, with heat. And uh, of course, there may be increased sebum production in uh, young people. And that cumulative can result in kind of like clogging of the pores. And that can lead to more and more in skin inflammation. For the rest of us who may not be so badly affected, right. how should we take care of our skin, for example, when we do have to wear a mask? If you can afford to change your mask, every four to six hourly, that would be ideal. And to try to take a uh, mask breaks, like 15, um, 30 minutes or so. So, and allow your skin to rest. You consider things like cloth mask, which is a more breathable kind of fabric, and more comfortable for the patients. Am I right to say that the cloth mask is the most comfortable along the spectrum, but it may not be the safest? Yes, I agree. So, what about this? How's this as a mask? This is called a silicone gel mask. So it's supposed to resemble N95, so it's able to offer a relatively airtight protection. But um, the only thing is, it is relatively airtight, it can also lead to skin irritation. So it may not be suitable for uh, everyday use or for people with sensitive skin. So in my quest to find out which mask is best for me, here's what I found out about these eight masks. Disposable masks are not the same as a medical grade surgical mask. You really don't know what quality you are buying. And being one time use only, it does generate a lot of waste. Carbon filter masks, I find out, are no more effective than other masks when it comes to filtering viruses. The silicon gill mask fits too tightly against my face and might cause irritation. I couldn't wear the government-issued mask for prolonged periods of time, so it's not an option for me. Same with the commercial antibacterial masks with a water repellent layer. The copper and nano-silver masks are expensive, and more studies will have to be done to see if they are effective against COVID-19. So that leaves me with this, a two-ply mask with space for filter.